What's up guys? So I just wanted to bring you guys with me today because I'm having such a good time and golden hour is turning out awesome. This is the best sunlight we've had in a while. Um, but yeah, I just want to bring you guys out here and talk about this cannonet and have some fun with it. And we'll do some more video in back in the house and talk more about it, show you the photos and everything. But sure is nice to get out in the woods once in a while, isn't it? I know I love it. One thing that's nice with this little cannonet is the size. If you ever do street photography or doing a little bit less or something, you just want to grab something small that you can throw in your pocket or around your neck and be easy to carry. This thing's awesome for that. All right, guys, we made it to a river in a new spot I haven't been to before. It's pretty cool. Let's check it out. Hey guys, so we're back here at the house and I wanted to give you a little more in-depth overview of my Canonet QL17 here than I was able to give you out in the woods. So I just wanted to show you a little more about what the camera does and how to do it and what my opinions of it are a little bit and then I'll show you some more sample photos here at the end of this. We'll start here on the lens. So this is kind of your main control center on this the thing. The uh, shutter speed and the aperture focus, everything's right here. Uh, so here on the front is your shutter speed. So you set your shutter speed just by twisting that. You go all the way down here to bulb, which has a lock right here. You have to push that to get to bulb. And then you go to 1 4th, all the way up to 1 500th on the uh, fastest shutter speed. Then the next ring right here is your aperture control, which if you go over here to A, it turns the camera meter on and uh, puts you in a shutter priority mode. So whatever shutter speed you select, the camera will select the appropriate aperture for you. Um, it's a little different, but I've, I've made good photos with it and practiced with it uh, now enough that I can get it to select what I want regardless uh, being a shutter priority. And you can also shoot it fully manual just by turning the adjustments where you want them. Um, however, when you're not in A mode, your meter will not work in camera, which it meters through here on top of the lens. So you will have to either go to A mode and see what the camera suggests and then shoot manual, or uh, have a separate meter with you. The next part here, this little window there, where it says ASA 400, that's your setting for your film speed for your meter. Uh, I shot Fuji 400 last, so I'm on 400 ISA or ASA there. And to change that, you come over here to this little switch, depress that with your fingernail, and slide it up and down, and that will change the scale here for your film speed. So that's pretty much all of the controls on the lens. Your 
focus and everything, which uh, is got a little tab here. It's not focused like a traditional SLR. You just grab this tab, and it's got a really quick ring from infinity to full close, um, which takes a little bit of getting used to. But once you do, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's fast focusing. From the front of the camera, the rest of the controls are pretty traditional rangefinder controls up here. You have your film advance lever, um, your rewind right there, which also opens the camera when you pull up on it. And if you haven't watched my how to load the Canadette video, I'll link that in the description below. And then over here is your shutter release. It does have a cool built-in feature. If you half press, you do get an exposure lock. So if you're shooting a difficult situation, you can meter in the shadows, lock your exposure, come back up, take your shot. On the back, still pretty traditional rangefinder stuff. Uh, battery check button here. Uh, my LED doesn't work, so it's just for decoration. Uh, rangefinder window. Oh yeah, and the hot shoe for the flash, uh, which apparently Canon did design a flash specifically for this camera, um, so everything's fully automated with it, which is awesome. Um, but I don't have one. Right here's a, this little candy cane stripe window shows you if your film's loaded properly, which this is empty, so I won't do anything. But that will dance back and forth when you crank the advance lever. But like I said, we're empty, so it won't do anything. Right here is your shutter cocked indicator. It's red for cocked, white for not. So that's pretty cool too. But yeah, this uh, camera is pretty simple, easy to use. The size of it's great. It's a really small camera, full 35 millimeter. Um, so it's awesome just to carry around with you. It's really not inconvenient at all. Um, it's super easy to load film into. So like I said, watch that other video if you're interested in that. Um, it's the easiest manual advance camera I've ever loaded film in. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot to it. I love it. The lens is super sharp. I love the way it renders bokeh. Um, I just don't have a lot bad to say about this camera. Uh, the 1.7 aperture is pretty fast for a fixed lens deal. Um, it's really versatile camera. I'm really happy with it. So, uh, yeah, if you'd like to go ahead and watch these sample photos, they're coming up next. Uh, uh, the ones I've been showing you in the video were Fuji 400, Superior Extra, I think. And then uh, I've also got a roll of HP5 that I pushed to 800. And then a regular box speed 400 HP5 roll that I'll show you a few shots out of for these sample photos. So yeah, if you've got any questions about it, uh, want to know anything else or statements, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you on that. And uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, be thrilled to have you guys hanging out on my channel for a while. Thanks guys. See you next time.